Okay, fine. Let's start. Okay, so uh, fine. Yesterday, I think we did some practical, right? Uh, creating our first Java application, right? Basically, I'll not say first Java application, but it's more about creating our first Java file. Okay, fine. So uh, yeah, whatever can go in a Java file, uh, very uh, elementary things, but yes. Uh, it just tries to cover what all can be defined in a Java file. Okay. Fine. Uh, we can just have a quick look at what was done. So this was the file which we had created. So yeah, we have a file named hello.java. Okay. And where we are putting one class definition. Right. It was said, okay, we said oh, we have a class called hello world. Uh, similar to what we had done in C language. Okay, something on that line. We thought, okay, let's put a function, like a func main function in C. Okay, uh, yeah. So it was just uh, uh, okay. Whatever we had in C, so putting it straight away here. Okay, we wanted to try what would happen. Okay, and then we uh, then we realized when we tried to compilation goes through with that single method, but when we try to uh, execute right fine oh, thinking that oh, I would like to execute that main method right so then it does it, it gives us an error message saying you need a method called public static mm -hmm. return type void and the main method name should be main and parameter should be of type array of string okay okay so then that, that's when we added another method called main fine same name fine uh, see same name but parameters are different list of parameters is different so that's way it identifies that this is a different method okay fine so name plus the type of parameters the method take that is what uniquely identifies a method in java okay so within a class definition okay fine this is what is required yes you can have multiple methods so class contains methods okay java file doesn't directly have a method right like c language oh you put a main function fine so java what does a java have class what else yeah after the class what are the other things we have We even could have a enum. Yeah. Fine. A class, a Java file can contain a. You can use it to define a enum. And uh, what was enum? How enum was different from a class? In enum, it's just like a class definition, but it has before we put the members which uh, which are similar before we you know there uh, we use we have used class to define methods inside it right so but before we put a method fine we can specify the list of objects okay fine so it has a list of objects for example oh, we said okay let's have an object called hi let's have an object called hello a semicolon ends the list and then it is more like just like a class Fine. So, if you wanted to put a method, you couldn't have uh, avoided a sem. You could at least need a semicolon and then put the method. Okay. So, semicolon is used to indicate end of object list. And so, enum just like a class, but difference is additionally you have a object list. Okay. Fine. What else will go in a Class definition. When we are looking at uh, the features which go right up to uh, current version of Java, yeah. And so we even can have a record definition. And this is from Java 16. 
think a java file may contain a record definition yeah and then after record yes what else can be there so we could use a record uh, only thing when we define a record we use the name of the record but it takes a parameter list in which we are keeping blank okay when it, it won't compile without the parameter list so it's a empty parameter list right? just like for methods we have parameter a record also has parameter okay so there's a parameter list for the record and we could put a record definition also in a java file right and uh, proceeding further we said okay we have a interface right you can also define uh, so a java file is used for can also be used for defining a interface okay and interface like the earlier things fine can also have our public static void main okay so that public static void main is available for use in interface also uh, before java 8 fine right? a static method was not allowed in the interface so if this was tried find public static void main in an interface in a previous version of java prior to java 8 and that would not have come back okay then we'll be looking at more detailed things about interface later but and just so fine then what else what else goes in a java file okay so we have something more yeah. We can even have annotations. Right? Uh, the annotation, how an annotation is being defined in a Java file. So this is only to show the very basic syntax for defining the various kinds of things which go in a Java file. And you have a class, we have a enum, we have a record. We have an interface, we have annotation, and, and you know any number of such things can be defined in a single Java file. So we also put another class also. And so yeah, so all of these items, one Java file can contain multiple such definitions. And what are so a Java file is used for defining five kind of items. And so Java is only about five things. That's why. Right. Okay. Right. Anyway, uh, they have further more categories and everything. So, as we proceed, and all of these are just like data types, right? Okay. Right. With a data type, you can declare variables of the type, right? First thing, if uh, you know, you declare, uh, you put a type name and a variable name. And so maybe you are writing any of these things. So maybe inside a main method, you want to declare a variable of type hello annotation, that's fine. You can say hello annotation HA, then HA1 comma HA2. Okay. Usage wise, yes, how to use them is a separate thing. Okay. But all are data types. That's one thing. You can have variable of any of these types. That's one thing. Fine. Right? So uh, yesterday we, yes, we had tried and then what we did, so we compiled this compilation, when we compile this what happens, it creates a fine class file, Java, uh, Java bytecode, okay, so that is a class file, right, and it creates class file for each and every type. So if you have five items in this or six items now, because we also put another, one more class definition, we got six class files by compiling one Java file. Okay. Fine. Uh, okay. And then, uh, yeah. So that was one thing. So we did Java C to compile. Then what we did? We have used the Java command to. Uh, execute what? execute the main method okay fine so when we say java followed by a type name fine it may be class interface enum 
fine or a record when annotation would not contain main fine right? because it cannot contain a static method fine right? the main reason for annotation uh, why we did not put a main method here oh, we put a main method but it's in a different form altogether okay right? so uh, the reason is yes annotation is slightly different used in a different way there's a different purpose for annotation okay fine of course it's a type that means i can declare a variable of that type that's fine but the usage is uh, usage is different right? uh, i'll just demonstrate one very quickly we can just have a look at how a uh, annotation is used so the purpose of annotation may become clear okay we may not be defining annotations and uh, here we have defined one annotation just for our purpose but yes we have annotations in java okay and their purpose has been different this annotation thing came from java 5 okay okay so we def uh, fine we'll just quickly look at this annotation thing because okay so if we want to use annotation how will it be used okay uh, yeah let's say we have uh, see each of them contains a method called main right all others they are having a main method which is yeah what is this main method for any method what is mandatory what is the mandatory part of any method if i am writing defining any method what will be required name must be there okay and uh, we have a parameter list, maybe blank or whatever, right? but it has that parameter list, syntax wise, method name, parameter list, and before the parameter, uh, before the method name, just before the method name, it must have a return type. And the idea is, here is a function, it's more like a function, here is a function, which takes those inputs. Okay, parameters are nothing but the inputs to the function and if you give some input to the function, what will be returned will be of this type. Okay, that is the whole idea about a function. Function is like a box, right, where some inputs are given and may give you a value. If it's not giving back a value, we'll say return type is void. Okay, that's how uh, the syntax of a function is. Okay, now, so what are these things then? What are these two things? For a function, what are these two? I'm not asking for the meaning, but what are they? They are nothing but something like qualifying it. Okay, oh. Telling about this method or oh, this method, I want it to be a static method, right? It's a kind of thing, it's just qualifying it. Okay, so this is a static method, but oh, this method, well, oh, let it be public, and we're just qualifying it, right? We call them as modifiers, these are known as modifiers. So, in public and private, it's uh, the main difference is we can call this uh, main class, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're not going into the meaning. Uh, uh, in that sense that uh, what uh, uh, what uh, how the usage is coming but what they are they are nothing but modifiers mm -hmm. and giving meaning right this is the method definition part right uh, a method would have a name return type and a parameter list okay that's the main idea but yes it is being qualified by something we say this is a modifier and so this method has a modifier your even a class or interface can also have a modifier saying oh it is a public interface okay oh what i want this to be marked as public fine the meaning of public yes that is known from what the meaning is for the modifier how it changes uh, the behavior of a particular thing right fine what that meaning is in the language and it is part of the Java language. Fine. So Java language has given a meaning. If you use this word, this is what it means. Okay. So we have modifiers. Modifiers can be there for 
method modifier can be there for the type like public is a modifier for all the types so when i define a type i can say oh i want this interface to be a public interface i want this annotation to be a public annotation and so it's a modifier okay now what is an annotation annotation is a programmer defined modifier you want to create your own modifiers that's where we create a annotation Okay, since we have an annotation called hello annotation, we have actually created a modifier for us. Okay, we have created a modifier. The meaning of the modifier, this is a modifier called, okay, when we use this modifier to indicate that it's not from the Java language, but it's from programmer, we would use it as at the rate hello annotation. Okay, they are used as at the rate and name of the annotation. So it's a modifier. So, if for example, now since we have this, uh, okay, uh, would it, uh, find anywhere, any of the, uh, it could be for the interface or it could be even for the method, I would be allowed to put a modifier saying at the rate. And that's valid. Only one thing here is the annotation, hello annotation here is saying I need a parameter by the name name. And the value for that parameter should be of type int. Okay. So yes. When we use hello notation, we will be using it by saying, okay, main equal to 5, some integer value. Okay. I want to invoke it with some integer value. Fine. If you want to make it more meaningful, okay, fine. Let's change the name of the annotation. To make it meaningful. Okay. Difficulty. And instead of using main, let me say value. Okay. So if someone will use difficulty, he can specify the value of the difficulty. The type is integer. So now, yes, what is the change I'll be making? At the rate, oh, this method has a difficulty level. Okay, uh, so I, instead of this, I might be using value. Okay, now one thing about the name value for an annotation is if you call it as if you have, this is known as an attribute to an annotation. When we put a method here, okay, this is we look at it as a method, right? Where the name of a method is, in this case it's value, it doesn't allow parameters to the method that we have tested. And we have tested that it doesn't allow any parameter to this method and must have a return type. When we put return type, well, that was an error. Okay, so we have put the type as int. But when we change the, this specific method name called value has a meaning, has one advantage that in the sense that uh, if, if the attribute here, we call this as an attribute, if the attribute name is value, it's not necessary to specify. You can just say at the rate difficulty and skip the value. Integer, it has to be integer, that's it. But to specify that value equal to this, no, that's not required to say value. Since the name, only the specific name called value. If it is main, yes, I'll have to put it. main equal to this. Okay. If there are multiple values, uh, there are multiple attributes, comma, another attribute name equal to the value according to the type. Okay. That's the usage of a annotation. Okay. It's nothing but a modifier, which programmer is able to define.
language has given us modifiers when there are modifiers from the language it says if it's a class these are the modifiers which are available we'll see how those modifiers work what is the meaning given by each of the modifiers right but annotations are nothing but your own modifiers which you would like to add the meaning of that will have to be used by you only the language doesn't know their meaning and it doesn't know the meaning of the word difficulty okay fine for the java language yes it's just some annotation which is allowed to be used with a, like a modifier for a method for a class and we'll see there are some other places where this modifier can be used and wherever modifiers are allowed yes annotation will be allowed okay right? one thing about the conventions which are followed here okay when we use any annotation it's fine to mix up like this right uh, see this is the method that's fine the order of these three i have this has got three modifiers public static and at the difficulty okay you can put them in any order it it shouldn't matter okay then they can be put in any order the convention followed is if you are using any annotation put it before all others and in a separate line this is valid it will come back okay want right? want to test this okay you can compile at least okay. the meaning of annotation no we have not yet applied the meaning of any annotation it will be up to the developer of the annotation and how he wants to use it maybe someone will then be writing a tool to measure okay which class has how much difficulty how many methods have what levels of difficulties someone can do some analysis based on this okay so he will have to write his own separate tool for doing that meaning given to an annotation how to use annotation is not java's problem okay it is the developer fine but yes you create your own annotation uh, own modifiers rather right we are annotating it fine annotate is okay fine okay fine so we may just compile this and see that it is compiling okay fine we are not trying to do any analysis or anything on that but this just to show the meaning of annotation it's just like a modifier and then we'll make it the way what is the convention used and then we'll define it like that okay okay fine so let's change our three to src and let's compile and we have the hello.java okay so still compiling hello.java here and it's compiling so it's not complaining about it okay fine but then what i had mentioned was that if we use it's a fine it's just a modifier for our fine the convention here is that we always use it in a separate line so we would put it like this so this is how the convention is the convention is if there are annotations you are applying to a and find any member like example here i have used it on method okay it should be put before all others okay in a separate line fine that's just a convention okay. but from uh the compilation and other syntax point of view it's another modifier which is available to you okay and so uh, basically uh, annotations are developed by for use by certain tools okay and where uh, we will have various tools and there are various uh, frameworks which are there so when there are frameworks 
frameworks are like tools. They will have to derive meaning and they will say, okay, let's have these kind of annotations. If you put it here, I'll derive a particular meaning from it. So what is the meaning of at the difficulty is up to some tool to decide how it wants to use it. Okay. Fine, clear? What is annotation that? Fine. So, because yes, all other things we have at least something called main method which was used. So, I just wanted to do this and so we changed the name to make it meaningful. We said, okay, let's difficulty and we have uh, attribute call. So, that's it. So, methods are here. The methods will have no parameters. Fine, they will not have parameters. They will have a type, return type, not a void type. Okay. Then uh, I'm not going to what is the, there is a limited list of types which can be used. You can't be just putting any time. If I put it as long, that would become an error. Okay. Then if I put it some other type, maybe because another hello world is also a type. If I say another return type is another, so that's a problem. And there are limited kind of types which can be used. It can be using array types also. And for example, if I say, oh, it's returning an int array, right? Or maybe instead of difficulty, uh, let me create one more annotation at the rate interface author. And then I'll say, oh, it's a string array. And if that's the case, okay, for a class, okay, I can say, okay, uh, this is the class, another hello world, and I'll say, at the rate author, and now it requires an array, right? But here, what is allowed is you can put just saying, fine, okay, so we can put our names here, maybe. Or let me put James from a maybe something like so array means just give multiple values. Okay. So uh, when this is giving you idea, yes annotations you can create your own meaningful annotations okay. uh, we'll just need to check because uh, maybe brackets may be needed for that yeah name equal to value okay uh, we have called it as value the only thing I think What's needed here is uh, okay. Let me put it in braces. Okay, and that should compile. That compile. So yeah, we had to put it in braces. Okay. So, yeah, and, uh, fine, I'm not, uh, let's not no, go into the definition of annotation, but fine, let's proceed with the, our today's topic, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, any other, any questions you have now related to what we have done so far? Java file used for defining five kinds of things. Right? Java, that command is used for executing a main. Fine, main which is defined to be public static. Fine, return type is void. Okay. Parameter will be string array. Okay. Okay, fine. So now let's proceed with the data types okay so what are the data types available in java 
right? Let's look at this now. Yeah. So data types in Java can be categorized at a very broader level. Right? They can be categorized as primitive types, right? also known as the built-in types. Okay. And so they are either primitive types or we call them as the second other category is reference type. Okay. Right. Okay. Within primitive types, or okay, let me first put the reference type. What are the various reference types available in Java? String, okay. What is string? Name of a class. Okay. And so, since a string is name of a class, yes, we'll put it as class. Any kind of classes. So all classes are types. It's not only string, but all the classes which are there, they are called, they are types. So we have, okay. Uh, so all kinds of classes. Yeah. You know. What are the other things which, see all the things which a programmer is able to define, uh, the new types which a programmer creates, classes, interfaces, enums, annotations, records. Okay. Other than this. And we have a separate type, I'll put it as here, uh, it's a type derived from any of the types, it's more of a structure, data structure called array types, arrays, any kind of an array, and array means, array is something like this, right, array is always written as some kind of a type, okay, and you have Square brackets. And that's our array type. So all of these, this is what is, these are the reference types. Okay. Fine. We'll come to the reference type, but before that, let's go to the primitive types available in Java, the built in types basically. Right. So, what are the built in types? Okay. Yeah. Int, care, float, yeah. then yes. string, string? Uh, not a primitive boolean, boolean. boolean. Double. Double. double, double and long, long. Right. Okay. Uh, short. So yeah. Short. So we can have. Then let it, me put it like this: byte, short, mm. int, long, float, mm. double, care, and boolean. Mm. Okay, almost similar to what you had seen in C language, except for one small thing, which is about the Boolean. Right? Boolean in Java is a separate type. Right? If you are comparing with C language, how it is different is, in C language, Boolean is not a separate type. It is part of numeric type. Any zero, non-zero is a Boolean. Fine. A numeric value, if it is zero, that false, that represents false. And non-zero represents a true. And non-zero would represent a true. And so we have, uh, okay. And so, fine, clear? These are the primitive types. Okay, let's look at each of them. Byte, short, int, long, float, double, care, and boolean. Fine. So before the last one, yeah. Uh, now comparing with C also. Okay. And some comparisons from C language. Okay. Uh, in C language, we have the keyword called signed and unsigned. Fine, we got the keywords like signed and unsigned. Fine. In Java, we don't have these two keywords. 
Okay, we don't have these two keywords. Right? The num these are required for the numeric types, right? So except for Boolean, all other things are either signed or unsigned, right? So uh, signed and unsigned doesn't apply to a Boolean. Okay, signed and unsigned will apply to in C language. It would have been applicable to the other uh, and seven uh, seven types, right? So out of that, only care here is an unsigned type. So Java doesn't have the keyword called sign unsigned. So you never declare something to be signed or unsigned. It is already fixed by the language. Fine. So byte, short, int, long, float, and double, they are the signed types. Care is the unsigned type. Care is the unsigned type. Depending on this, the range is going to be decided for each of the type. Okay. Of course, float and double, they follow a very different uh, convention. It's uh, other things, you know, byte, short, int, long, and the care type. We can say they are the integral types. Okay, so let's categorize. I think, I think we can rearrange them. Okay, let me put float and double below the care. Okay. Okay, so, fine. so if we want to categorize them further, and all of these are, you can say they are numeric, okay. just categorization, right? And within numeric, again, maybe I'll have to push them further. These are the integral type, okay, whole numbers. And the last two, they are the floating point type. Okay. Fine, so signed is applicable to these and float and double, they are signed. That's only to compare with C language. Each one has its own range. Yeah, what's the size for byte? Yeah. Sizes, yeah, what are the size? Size, and suggestion size. One byte. In number of bytes, right? we are putting it in bytes. Short will be two bytes. Yeah, one byte is eight bits, okay. and long is going to be eight bytes. Okay, uh, and come back to care. Float is four bytes, and double is eight bytes. Okay. When we say floating point type, okay, let me put. Uh, okay, when we use integral types, yes. How are the bits going to be interpreted? How is the uh, meaning? How do we derive the value? Following, they are sign types. We will say we follow the two's complement for, and they are the two's complement. Okay, care is unsigned. Okay, so this is unsigned, and therefore, therefore no uh, no meaning of complement or anything. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's the size for care? Care data type, what is the size? How many bytes? bytes. For the care type? Yeah. In C language, we normally use one byte, but in Java it is two bytes. Right? We'll see the reason why we need two bytes. Okay, 
So care one by two. Yeah, what's the range? Since it's a two's signed and two's complement. This is signed and two's complement. Okay. Okay, should I push them further? One more. Okay. Yeah. So one byte, what's the range? Minus. 2 to the power of, I'll just put it like this, 2 to the power of 7. One bit for the sign, and therefore we have the 2 to the power of 7. So from this up to 2 to the power of 7, seven minus 1. Okay, so that's the range. Okay, yeah? so this value is nothing but there's a value called minus 128 up to this <coughs> one is plus 127. Okay. Right. So similarly, yes, this will have how many bits available? 2 to the power of, this is 16 bits, right? So 15, 1 bit for sign, okay, minus 32768. Okay. Okay, up to 2 to the power of 15 minus 1. And that value is 32767. Okay. Yeah. Here I uh, will not put the value, it's some 10 digit number. Okay. And this is 32 bits in all, 31, okay, and going up to 2 to the power of 31 minus 1. And similarly, this will be 2 to the power of 63 and going up to 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. Yeah, what will the range here? 2 bytes. So, what's the range? 0, fine, up to, and you have 2 to the power of 16 minus 1. <coughs> Okay, and that value is six five five three five. Okay, floating point type. Okay, I'm not giving the ranges here. Now, when we say floating point type, I just uh, point you to something which you can check out. Okay, on the net. Uh, this uh, here we say we are following two's complement, right? Here. Uh, the meaning of bits is going to be derived from according to uh, this is following a standard that is the IEEE standard right so this is IEEE okay 754 okay? just look at this right IEEE 754 uh, what it is doing is uh, we have got how many bits available to us for float bits bits 32 bits, those 32 bits are divided, fine, uh, they are divided in, I, I'll put it as three parts, the most significant bit is anyway for the sign, okay, then we have two parts, so there is an exponent and a, we call it, uh, okay, uh, IEEE 754, that standard calls it as significant, okay, so there's an exponent part and a significant part. Okay, then we may uh, normally be calling it as mantissa. Okay, fine. Uh, 
fine so it's not according to like uh, the way these integral numbers are fine the meaning of those 32 bits how to derive if it's a int the way the meaning is derived is different yes you just go by the straight away simple numerical value okay of course leaving the sign bit fine okay. fine but in this case for float and double yes it is divided into three parts most significant bit is the sign bit fine and then we have next few number of bits which are for exponent part and then we have the next uh, all rest of the bits for the significant okay fine and that helps us to uh, have values which will have uh, which are floating point values and they have a decimal they can be using a uh, fine so from the point of view of the value fine not those 32 bits the the way these 32 bits are available you will be able to have values which are having decimal points okay. fine of course uh, these are uh, okay let me ask now question and this is applicable to C programs also. Okay. So fine, let's put this. Okay. And there are more things actually, even for the integral types. Okay. So if I ask here uh, float or maybe even with double. So I am just putting some code here. Okay, let me put it maybe I'll put it here, right? So there's a piece of code which I'm writing which says uh, double a equals uh, what can I assign so I can say okay 7.5 double b equals 0 you can even say 0, 0.0 and doesn't matter and then someone says double c equals a divide by b yeah what do you think <coughs> What goes in C? What's the value for C now? On the other hand, okay, maybe I'll do it here. For see, what am I? Uh, what am I currently doing is going to be applicable to all the numeric types, all the integral types here. Right. So for for all the integral types, let me keep it at the end of the integral types over here. So we have a code which goes like this. It says. Uh, int a equals 75 int b equals 0 i'm just doing a similar thing with what we have done there c equals a divided by b yeah what happens to c here what do you get as c this answer is simple what's there in c No, it's an error. This a division by b will not give me a valid int. It doesn't give me a valid int. It says I can't do this division. But what about this? What is the answer for this? What's the value in c? And this is something which is for C language also. It's not just for Java. I'm not talking only about Java. It's almost all languages. Wherever they use floating point type, they will. Most of them are following IEEE seven five four. Okay. In most cases, this is what is followed IEEE seven five four. And therefore, this when we have a division by zero. For a floating point type, then so yeah, this is not going to be an error. Now, what if I said this is not an error? Then you know what is the answer. What is the value for C now? Now tell me what is the answer. If you divide by zero, what do you get? Yeah. Put your hand. Yeah, it is infinity. The answer is it is infinity. C has the value for infinity.
you can try this even with C language. It's not anything special about Java. It's basically about the standard that you have to have. This has a provision for representing infinity. Those 32 bits are the 64 bits which we have. Yes, we have a special combination to represent that. Okay, this is different, right? This is going to be a positive infinity. <coughs> like positive infinity, there will be a negative infinity. And what happens if someone divides 0 by 0? What is 0 divided by 0? No, 0 divided by 0 is not 0. We say it is not a number. Fine. So we have what we call as NAN. And we just say NAN. Okay. Fine. Want to try this out in J shell? And you can very quickly test that, right? We have from Java 9 onwards, we have got J shell. Okay. Fine. We saw that yesterday. Okay. So let's quickly go to J shell and see what happens. So, yeah. Oh, you want to have a double A equals 7.5, comma B equals 0. Okay. Okay. Fine. And now we have A divided by B. I, I'm not assigning it to a variable. Or, okay, you want to put it into a variable, let's say double C equals infinity. It's not giving any error here. Okay, and let me make now A equals minus 7.5. Okay, I can just say C equals A divided by B minus infinity. Let's make A equals 0. Okay. <coughs> okay. Fine. I, I, I'll now just uh, quickly show you uh, these three values, right? How they are stored. Okay. It's like this. Uh, you may have to, you know, uh, if you want to know, know more about it, fine. Search for IEEE 754. Okay. Uh, so that will tell you how those. So here, you know, what is float according to IEEE 754? Fine. Uh, many times we also refer to these as single precision floating point and double precision floating point. Fine. IEEE 754 simply uses the term as single and double. 32 bit is single and 64 bit is double. Okay. Fine. Uh, if you search, I think there are some sites which will give you a very interactive way where you can specify the bits and see what is the value. Okay. Fine. But yeah. Uh, okay. So I was mentioning this that it's divided into three parts. Okay, maybe 32 or 64 bit, whatever. But here, the most significant bit is the sign bit. Fine. We have a sign bit, then we have few number of bits. Uh, in case of float, the number of bits are 8, which are used for the exponent part. Okay, and then the rest of the bits, they are known as significant. Okay, fine. Now listen to this carefully what I'm mentioning. When all the exponent bits are ones, okay, if all the exponent bits are ones, then it is not representing any finite value. 
all the exponent bits are one it doesn't represent a finite value okay so getting all the bits here as ones means yeah then it is not a finite value then it is one of those three things okay so yeah the number of exponent bits for float will be 8 and for double it will be 10 okay fine rest is the significant part okay fine now here if you have uh, all the significant bits as zeros right then it is representing a infinity all significant bits are zeros so everything here is a zero here right okay so all bits here are zeros that's a infinity okay all ones in the exponent all zeros in the significant part is the infinity which one positive or negative decided by the sign bit zero means positive one means negative okay fine so that's how the bits are right fine. the meaning of bits is going to be derived like this yeah for float if it's a float type it's 8 bits if it's a double type it's 10 bits this is single and double right and so this is from the standard okay and uh, okay so now so what remains now all the representations where exponent is a one is any so this is not all zeros that's the only thing so many combinations there are so many combinations of these bits they all represent n if this is not all zeros so many bits all of them are not zeros oh, then it's not a number because i find this is all ones <laughs> yeah Okay, fine. Uh, anyway, uh, let me tell you one thing here. These float, float uh, the type float and double, and they are not precise values. They are they have a level of imprecision, and that imprecision, the way this uh, IEEE 754 works, it has a limitation here. Okay, in the sense that yes, uh, the precision level falls drastically as you move away from zero and on a, see one thing uh, how many oh we got 32 bits or we got 64 bits right okay now just imagine this this is my number line okay and we got a zero here okay maybe uh, since we are talking about floating point values we are talking about all <coughs> kinds of real numbers we are thinking about real numbers all the time right so if you are talking about real numbers just tell me how many real numbers between 0 and 1 <laughs> in my right fine so you can understand one thing we cannot have a mechanism which can represent everything there okay. right not all values so we have actually got you know uh, from 0 to 1 there will be a limited number of values which are representable by a float or by a double type Fine. You go to 1, from 1 to 2, that's fine. And then you go from 2 to 4, okay, 4 to 8. Fine. This whatever has been designed, has been designed in a manner that the number of values which are between 0 and 1, uh, oh, sorry, between 1 and 2, that's the number of values which I can represent from 2 to 4. 
that's the same number of values which I can represent between 4 and 8. And that's the same number of values which I can represent between 8 and 16. So near to 0, my level of precision is very high. As I move away from 0, the precision falls exponentially. Okay, and I'll just show you the precision, how bad it can go when you take some 10 digit number, 9 or 10 digit number for a float. For double, yes, it will take a higher number for you to see that same thing. Okay, fine. So, what do you expect? Uh, okay, so if I am writing a code which says float, okay f is equal to and I am assigning a 10 digit number let us say uh, okay so I have 1, 2 or maybe only a 9 digit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 okay I put this number into f fine what you will be getting in f is not this number this is not representable in the float it can represent so okay let's see what ha exactly happens to this if i assign this we can see it in j shell for float type okay for double type you'll have to go to some 15 digit 16 digit number and then you'll be able to observe similar things because there's a the exponent has more number of bits there the level of precision is better okay but here the level of with float you can uh, see this much more easily so why I'm showing this is one thing is advised do not use floating point types for any scientific application okay or even for a financial application where you know the precision level will matter okay fine okay and where you expect the values to be higher and they are on a higher side large values okay so wherever large values are involved and uh, for scientific applications yes slight error in here and there and then so one thing yes so we never try to use float and double basically one thing is float is banned just don't use float at all any time what is the like output is, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you want to use decimals, right? Yeah, you want to use large numbers with decimals also. And what about uh, the value which is outside the range of 2 to the power of 63? Right? Fine. See, 2 to the power of 63 will take you to something like an 18 digit number. Right? Fine. And you can see easily uh, that this number is quite small. Right? Compared to, I mean, it, it's not uh, uh, currently not as small, but then you just think of some uh, financial applications and the amount of scams which come up <laughs> normally, the, the size of the scams. The, my, the point is that you would not like to be using uh, soon they will, you know you'll run out 18 digit is not big and there are lot many applications security related applications they use 100 digit numbers okay so we have something to take care of those also in Java so we don't use the uh, okay so fine for smaller things yes you may be using the but one thing we normally would like to avoid float and double okay level of precision is fall of uh, small we'll soon experiment with this number and we'll see what exactly will happen uh, here you what I, I want to indicate with float the level of precision is to the order of eight eight in the sense 
the gap between two representable numbers at this level when this it comes to this is 8. So you have a, so when I assign this I think it probably goes into a value 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, 5, 6, 7 uh, instead of 8, 9 it will become 92. It won't be able to store anything between 92 and 84 here the same digits but with 84 so after 84 next comes 92 the type is float then that's the case okay the difference is of 8 okay uh, fine fine so one thing that's clear okay now uh, answering the uh, uh, what do we use then right so we have certain things, so we have got some classes for that, okay. So there are classes, there is a, uh, we haven't seen packages, but I, anyway, I'll use that here, okay. So we got something called, uh, we got a class called java.math.bigintegr. That's what the name suggests. Big integer means whole numbers. And for anything but decimals, you have the same thing, fine. So you may be using Java dot math 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 dot big decimal. So those are the things which can be used big integer big decimal so so we have to use classes there okay. yeah yes you know it's uh, uh, the big decimal is nothing but you're saying okay i have so many it's like a whole number with one decimal place at this place is the decimal it's not in the form of a fraction or anything okay and it's just a whole number with a assumed decimal point okay. see backward compatibility I was mentioning yesterday right Java gives you good backward compatibility uh, look at Python, Python 2 and Python 3, if uh, any was worked, <laughs> even with the types itself, the things have changed. The very basic primitive types, the, there is some type which has gone away. <laughs> gone away in the sense that, yes, uh, you don't have that type, but anyway, type was never mentioned to the end user, so users would not have realized it. No, Python 2 is not supported. Python 2 is not supported, but yeah, it was related to in, in, uh, integral types. Yeah. Anyway, uh, fine. So this is clear. Okay, fine. Then just quickly look at the uh, float, how it happens. Okay, fine. That uh, you can quickly see. So uh, clear about the float and double. The aspect of float and double in division by zero. Okay, we can try. Uh, okay, this we have tried anyway. So yeah, what we wanted was. Is equal to and uh, this was. Okay, you can see uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9 and E8, 1 point to this. So anyway, so uh, yeah, how do we put that percentage 12, it's anyway, it's a whole number. 12.1 uh, F, right? Comma F. 
okay so you can see this is 92.0 792.0 okay i can reduce the value of float fine but the idea is it couldn't store that value 8 million okay and okay fine. there are methods to which can help you to know what is the level of you know uh, the distance between two representable floats or of any particular type uh, we have the class called math and that has some methods anyway okay uh, yeah f is equal to instead of 89 uh, closer to 84 will be 80 That's eight four. And so after eight four, it's only ninety two. In between, nothing can be represented with the help of that kind of a I triple E seven five four format for single. In single precision, no. With double precision, same thing. You will find this kind of uh, problem where the precision level is more than an integer value, right? One. Okay. So that would be. Uh, that happens once we uh, cross a 15 digit number. Okay, and so you can any anyway experiment and try out the things, right? Okay, fine. So continuing with the types. Okay, uh, and so something about this uh, precision also we understand now, right? And uh, division by zero that's what is understood uh, yeah boolean means and true false okay so for boolean uh, we got two things true and false okay only two possible values uh, why it is different from c language i'll show you with another example here okay uh, when you write a if statement right Suppose I have a int a equals and whatever the value, right? it is 0 or non 0 in that sense. So for C language, if I write if a, that's going to be valid. This is valid in C, but not in Java. Because Java for Java, Boolean is a separate type. It's not a numeric type. You need to specify a Boolean type for the if. And it will not derive by saying, okay, zero or non-zero. That's not the case here. And it's a separate type in Java compared to C. Okay. Fine. Okay, so boolean is about true false, right? And okay, now uh, okay, few more things. Uh, these are all related to the numeric types only. So some more things about numeric types. Okay, how do we write a literal? What is the meaning of a literal? It's like a constant. Right? See, uh, we can use variable. We have a type and then we can say variable. But what is this when I write a 7.5 like this here, right? What is that? That's a literal, right? It's a literal. What is the type for it? It is of type double. No, not be, it is not because of this, but because of the way you have written. Because you included a decimal point, it becomes of type double. Okay. This is zero. What is the type? Just the type of that. If I have just said, okay, zero. What is the type? Int. 
Why? The type by default. Yes. If I just look at a particular, so when you write values like this, and they will be of a particular type always. Okay. Fine. And this is what we call as a literal. So literals are nothing but constants, fine, which we can declare for various types. And so here, uh, now let me uh, uh, deal with a few literals. And which, so this just to, uh, okay. So I'm writing two statements, uh, two Boolean expressions. Yeah, uh, uh, one more point. Yeah, uh, what is the advantage of not allowing uh, Boolean becoming a separate type and not just dealing in terms of uh, zero, non-zero? Okay, internally, yes, it's uh, it is storing some Boolean means yes, it would be always numbers, right? And zero, non-zero, that's how it is internally, but. For Java, it's not a separate type. Just think like this. If I had int a equals something, and if I was writing whether a equals 5 or not, and by mistake, if I just put like this, this would be valid in C. a equal to 5 is valid in C. What it does? Okay, it makes an assignment, and the value of this assignment is 5. The expression becomes 5 and would be taken as a valid thing in C, but this would not. So, this is some kind of I'm saying, you know, very common mistake which is made. Okay, and in Java, this would come out as a compilation error, and you would then be realizing, oh, I actually wanted to use double equal. Okay, and some advantage is there in that. <laughs> okay, this kind of error and were common in C. Many times, yes, you would have made that error. Okay, and so yeah, yeah, okay, and okay. I, I think I can leave that saying valid in C, not in Java. Okay, fine. So now coming to more on literals, right? So let's see this. We have uh, okay. I'm writing a boolean expression. Yeah. I'm writing two Boolean expressions. Okay. So, which is true, which is false? Or if both are true, both are false, whatever. This is true or false? And this is true or false? Both will be false. Any other answer? Yeah. What is zero one two? Okay. Okay, I'll give you some more hints about it. And what about this? Which is true, which is false. Okay. Yeah, why, 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 why first one is false? Because of time being equal and Double equal to is fine. I'm making comparison uh, of whether this is equal to the value provided on the right hand side. They are both numeric values, right? They are both numeric literals. This is a numeric literal. This is also a numeric literal. Okay. And uh, okay, what about this? This is valid or not? Is this valid or not as a numeric literal? In this same rule as in C here also, okay? It's not different from C. And this is also valid? 0x0C? 
Yeah, C is 12 basically, right? Okay, so 12 double equals 0 x 0 C is what true or false? And that should be true. And this definitely should be false because when it says 1 to what does it mean? 0 x 1 to that means it will be 16 plus 2. 1 to means 16 plus 2 because oh, when I have put 0 x, I understand what is following this is in hexadecimal. This is nothing but following the hexadecimal system and therefore this is 18. <coughs> 18 is not equal to 12. This is decimal, right? This is decimal. And then what is this? This is octal. Okay. And because this is octal, this is going to be false and this is going to be true. Okay. So, we can specify uh, integral value, numeric integral value, uh, the literal of it in terms of either octal, hexadecimal. How does it decide whether it is octal or decimal? How did it decide that this is octal? Because you start with a 0. If you start with a 0, okay, the next character will be looked at. Okay, it is not x. Okay, 0 followed by x, then I understand it is x. But 0 followed by any valid octal digit would mean it is in octal. Okay, the value is in octal. If someone tries to write like this, okay, invalid. Java will say this is not a valid thing, this is not a valid token for me at all. You started with a zero, fine. You didn't follow it with x to indicate it is in hex. Okay, you start with a 0, but the next thing what you have is not a, is neither x nor one more thing which has been allowed from Java 7, because many times you might be liking to specify a value in terms of the bits. Okay, and for example, 0 b, 0 b, 0 followed by a b means now I'm, I want to specify the value in binary. You can specify value in binary. So you can say 0b 1100. Yeah, that's going to be true. And 110 is 12. That's in binary. So when you start with 0, immediately, yes. If it is followed by x or b, I understand. Then I have to look at the other next things. Okay. But if you start with the 0, it is not x or b, I am expecting it to be octal digit only. Zero, one, yes, it is invalid. It is not an octal digit. It will allow anything from 0 to 7. Start with the 0, next. See, is the next one is not x or a b. Okay. Then it should only be between 0 to 7. Yeah. So, starting with 0 means it is a, you are specifying the value in octal terms. So, you can, fine, you can write your value in terms of decimal is normal. Decimal means you don't start with a zero, but any decimal digit, one to nine, then it is a decimal. You're starting with a zero, not followed by x or b, it's octal. Followed by x, you are you want to specify in hexadecimal. Followed by b, you want to specify in binary. Okay. Fine, clear. Numeric literals can be specified in decimal. Octal, decimal, uh, start, start from binary, so lowest is binary, right? Binary, octal, decimal, hexadecimal. 
Okay. Now, uh, okay, I'll write like this. Yeah, what's that value? What is this value? Is it lakh crore? I don't understand it, right? Or uh, if someone is familiar with million, billion, or how much, how much is that? It's difficult to read it, right? Oh, it would have been good if we could put commas there. No, we can't. But we can definitely use it like this. It's becoming readable. This is better readable and this is valid. In Java, from Java 7, you can use underscores in your numeric literals. They won't change the meaning. Improve the readability. You can't be given comma because comma has a different meaning altogether in the language. Okay. So as part of a numeric literal, right, you can use underscores to make it readable. Ten million. Ten million. <laughs> Man can read it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, it's always encouraged to use these underscores when you are doing large values, right? Okay. So even if I am writing something like ten thousand, I always write like this. Okay. And uh, India, we follow that one lakh thing, right? So we can, instead of this, we can just make it, okay. So for Indian, yeah, it can be like this, 10 crore. <laughs> okay, fine. Now, uh, you know, uh, we said, okay, what's the type? Again, coming to the type, what's the type? Int. Fine. By default, it would become... This literal, the type is in. Okay. Now, what happens if someone says uh, something like this? Yeah. It's an 11 digit number. Not valid as a int type. Right? By default, it is considering this as a anything you started some with a digit. Okay. Uh, it, it's between 1 to 9. Okay, this is in decimal, I understand. And in decimal, uh, if you give a value outside the range for the int, okay, then it will say this is not a valid literal at all. See, let me try here and you'll see what happens in JSHL. Okay, uh, where do you want to assign? Assign to a long? You think, okay, it is a long, okay, and, okay, it's not taking it, I'll have to type it again, okay, I mean, where is it expecting the semicolon? Achha, achha. Oh, 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 sorry. See, integer number too large. Oh, you want to assign it a value? So, you for a numeric literal, you can suffix it with a L and if it's a whole number to indicate the type is long. <coughs> now this won't be an error. Okay. But one thing, you know, someone reading that, he can think it is like 9011. Right? So, and some fonts, it may not be much difference. And therefore, to avoid this, it's normally advised because you can use upper or lower case L. It's always advised to use the capital L. Okay. Right? Avoid using the lower case L when you are 
trying to use the suffix for a integer literal to make it type long. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing, right? So clear on this? Okay. Uh, similarly, for floating point type also, okay, uh, you have by default, okay, let's see here itself. So if I say float f z equal to 12.5, what will it happen? What will happen? What is 12.5? What is the type for 12.5? It is double. Okay, this will be of type double. Right? You can put a f upper or lower case to say this is of type floating point type, single precision. So I am making it 32 bit. Okay, so that should be fine. Fine, clear? So literals, fine, literals for the numeric type. Now comes uh, one more type remains, the care type. Fine. What's a care type? What is a care? Okay. So care is a type, you can say care ch equals, okay. The literal for the character type normally specified using single quote, okay, and yeah, single quote and put a character, for example, this, right, okay, fine. So what is this basically? We say character A, but what is character A? What's the value? Basically, I say this is a numeric value. What is care capable of? Capable of values between? It's an unsigned number, 0 to 65535. Basically, when you're saying A, it's like saying, I put the value 65 here. Okay, just putting the value 65. What is 65? Why we say A is 65? Yeah. What is a care? Care is a? When it's for text, care is used for text. And it's an element of the text. Care is simply a one element of the, of a text, right? Text means a number of care values. Okay, fine. So, how does text come into picture in uh, our usages like this? What do we use with text? We use a character set. Oh, we have character set. Okay. So, there are character sets. There is a character set uh, called ASCII. Like ASCII, what is ASCII? What is a character set basically? What is a character set? What is a character set? Nothing but a kind of a standard. Character set is a standard. What it has done is, it has assigned values to the text elements. Okay, numeric values are assigned to the text elements. So ASCII is one such standard. So there is one way of assigning values to the text elements. Where uh, the capital A, is given the value 65 or the, uh, all the various characters are given the value okay so ascii is doing it but ascii uses ascii is a 7 bit code we say it is a 7 bit code that means it has limited number of characters how many characters are there 7 bit code means 2 to the power of 7 starts with 0 goes up to 127 So we have this numeric values from 0 to 127, each value for them we have got a character. Okay, so there is one text for, for example, even the value, uh, code 0, okay, you want the character 0, right. So this even accommodates for our control characters, for uh, non-printable characters. We were yesterday looking at that carriage return and line mm -hmm. placements. What is backslash R? What is backslash N? Yeah. 
backslash r what is backslash r the value is it's a carriage return the value is 13 decimal 13 okay fine uh, there's a line feed there's a yeah you were, uh, someone was asking this there's one more backslash f is form feed backslash n is the line feed f is for form feed oh new page okay uh, see on linux it has even you know on a command line if you just press control l it's like new page so it clears us okay. it's that doesn't work on windows but yes on linux that's how it works okay uh, backslash n is going to the new line carriage return I, I, I think yesterday we put that so these are values which are uh, okay let me now uh, show you what is ascii Quickly, we will have to, I think, uh, yeah. So ASCII has a, okay, that's fine. Uh, we have range from 0 to 125. That's what ASCII is. So this, what was this covering? This was covering control characters. So characters like uh, bell, carriage return, line feed, tab, so many. So those, so we call them as control characters. So we have control characters in the range. Okay, uh, uh, let me put the range first from 0 to I am putting in hexadecimal. I am writing hexadecimal now. Okay, so from 0 to 1f. Okay, these are 32 of them. Okay, these are the control characters. Okay, this is how the ASCII is designed. Okay, so 20 that is a space. From 21 up to uh, 212 f, okay, that is a special characters. Okay, so we can put it in a category called special characters, characters like at the rate and you know, less than, greater than, at the rate, exclamation, and those kind of things. Okay. Then three zero to three nine digits zero to nine. Okay. So next um, this is hex. Okay. Uh, you'll understand. Realize why I put in hex all these things. It's much easier with hex to remember. Okay, so 3a to 40. Again, more special characters. Oh, there are so many of them, right? Special characters. Uh, find comma, dot, and all those things less than, greater than. So we'll have places where special characters are kept. And then from 41 to 5a. These are 26 of them. Okay. 16 plus 10. A means it's going up to 10. And these are your uppercase. A to Z. Okay. Then from 5B going up to 6. 0, 5B to 6, zero, few of them, but these are again left for special characters. Okay. Then you can see from 6, 1, it should go up to 7, 8, and that is your lowercase letters. And so A to Z. Okay. So it has to go up to 7F. Okay. Now, only one thing here is uh, 7b to 7e are the special characters and 7f is a control character again. Okay. 
so that control character you can see these categories now uh, uh, the only thing to look at was how it is so easier to remember them it helps me because three zero to three nine easier to remember compared to forty eight to fifty seven okay fine it's easier to remember with hexadecimal than with decimal okay fine same thing look at this four one easier to remember rather than saying sixty five fine so four one to five a six one to seven a okay then it's much easier to remember with hex okay why have put it in hex and you know very logical it given so we have this 4125a 6127a in between whatever gap is there they are the special gap okay design is actually like that yeah so we get to remember i think it was designed very long time yeah this is 1965 <clears throat> so in that time they they needed to remember yeah. I mean, see one thing, uh, they were dealing with binary that time, more of binary. Okay, they had to physically set the bits everywhere. Okay, so it was much easier if you put hexadecimal, one hexadecimal digit is four bits. Okay, and so binary to hex and hex to binary is so simple, and so it's easier to remember this way. Okay, so one thing is ASCII came. Uh, an, uh, so uh, another point to know here is that we have various character sets. So ASCII was one standard which did it this way, but we had also we also had another kind of standard also along with ASCII, fine, which is a seven-bit code. We also had Absidic. Okay, let me put it now here. So it will not be mixed up. So like ASCII, we even had Absidic. Extended binary coded decimal. Uh, I don't remember the full, the full form. Yes. But Absidic was there, which is an eight bit code. Uh, only thing here, what you need to note here is in case of ASCII, uh, I don't remember the Absidic anyway, it was not required. Uh, but it was more comparable to the punch cards, much better linked to the punch cards. So this was designed by IBM. Yeah. And IBM had those punch card machines. I have seen punch cards. <laughs> okay. So uh, the thing to note here is in this, you know, if I order the values, I find that digits would come before the uppercase and uppercase come before the lowercase value. So if someone is ordering, the, uh, you know, trying to apply the ordering, Digits would be considered smaller than the uppercase letters, and lowercase letters are compared to uh, uppercase letter considered higher size. Okay, so if you are arranging them, yes, that's how it is done. Whereas in case of absidic, it was taking uh, digits at a later stage. Numbers, uh, the alphabets are first, and digits are later. Okay, and so I mean, ordering whenever someone was applying with. Uh, Absidic for the text data, it would work differently as compared to what was happening with the ASCII. But the idea is there were more than one standards. Okay, each so some machine manufacturer would follow this, someone would follow this, but later most of it was okay, we'll follow ASCII. But one limitation in ASCII, only so many characters are there, but we have more things. Oh, how do I represent my alpha, beta, gamma? I have those pi and so many other symbols are there. Oh, you can't accommodate with just 127 out of which so many are used up already. So 127 was too small. I think. Okay. And fine. So then, uh, yeah, so Absidic was, okay, 8-bit, it was covering more things, but still not everything. But then, uh, if, uh, now in Europe also, uh, these are all Latin characters, you know, the A to Z which we are following, they are all Latin. 
but even these latin characters they were accented when you would have a, a hat on top of it or some something fine or below side or something fine so these letters were accented so each region had their own requirements so uh, eastern europe western europe northern europe and you know central europe everyone would have their own special characters which were different from others but one thing was common everyone was following the ascii power so we had extensions of ascii okay okay absurdic i mentioned just so uh, okay fine i can put it here it's a So extensions of ASCII were there, and they used to call it as Latin one, okay, and Latin two, like this. So that was representing different different regions. I, I don't remember which one is for what, but yes, Latin one, Latin two, Latin three. Oh, we had so many versions of character sets. So these are all character sets. But what they did is they are extensions of ASCII. These are eight bit codes. Extension of ASCII, eight bit. So when it is eight bit, we get one twenty eight more characters. So there was one extension which was uh, uh, okay. It would deal with the Greek characters, more of the Greek characters. Uh, then even you know this Arabic characters also. These also these people also said okay, we also follow this. But so what was common was this what we have the ASCII part zero to seven F remains the same. they added more characters the following values so we have more values it's not only up to 127 now we are going up to 255 from 0 to 255 8 bits so all the extensions are there but different extensions in that second part there are two parts of it right first part is the basic which is ascii second part is the extension part extension part were different for different regions so they designed different different character sets so many character sets have been designed okay number of character sets have been designed oh, we even have one more character set let me tell you uh, we have a character and again another 8 bit iski okay and iski i stands for indian yes okay fine it's so iski was designed in 88 Okay. So yes, this was also an extension of ASCII. It's an extension of ASCII. That means up to one twenty seven, this is what is available. From one twenty eight, oh, we have those Indian characters. Now one thing is clear: zero to two fifty five is insufficient because we have so many characters. now whenever someone will receive a text and he is seeing that text the one who created the text he is following latin one the one who is trying to read it is following a different character set and he doesn't know he will see something different as what was initially designed to be the part which is from 0 to 127 that part of usage is very correct or that's correctly interpreted but other part is not correctly interpreted if the one who is reading it is doesn't not knowing how it was initially created so with every text should i be including that my text is so much this is the character set which i am following or should i separate send a separate message or the, use this particular character set not very practical there were difficulties with people now okay so in 91 Okay, a character set was designed as an extension of ASCII again, but it was not eight bit. It used more than eight bits. Initially, it started with sixteen bits, but now it uses twenty one bits. Okay, I will say between twenty and twenty one. It's not exactly full twenty one bits. Okay, uh, I'll give you the range in hexadecimal. Okay. so we have the character set is unicode we have a unicode character set which is uh, okay uh, if i have to give the valid range for unicode 
okay the range for unicode in hex okay hex ranges from 0 or rather let me put it like this 0 0 0 0 0 5 of them yeah up to uh, 1 0 ff that's the range for Unicode characters. Why this big range? Yeah. We would like to have characters that's also a character. It's not part of ASCII. It's not part of any of those things. ISCII was designed in 88. It doesn't have this character. This character came much later, right? The character is getting added. So basically, Unicode is a standard which is being extended. It's getting extended in the sense that more and more characters are being added with each version. So it has got versions here. Unicode has versions. Latest version is 15. Okay, we have Unicode 15. Uh, this character got added in 5.1. I'm not very sure. Somewhere around that time. Because this character wasn't there earlier. Uh, it was RS. We, we used to put RS. So, yeah, even RS is available to me. Yeah. Uh, because you can't remove. Yeah. So, that's also a character. Okay, so we got so many. Uh, so, what is Unicode? Yeah, what is Unicode? What is the idea of Unicode? One value, one character. See, what was the, the problem earlier? One value, I don't know what character it is. It depends on which character set you are following. He says, okay, one value, one character. And given uh, for every character, we'll have a separate value. Every character which is known in the world for from any of the scripts. What is happening is they are basically with new versions, uh, they're even finding out the old ancient scripts and adding them into this. Okay, adding code points into this. So these are known as code point values. For this, for Unicode specifically, the term used is code point. Okay, so we got code point values. Okay, and uh, okay, actually there are other code points. Uh, uh, the problem with Windows is it doesn't have all those good fonts available by default. We'll have to figure out so that we can show it. But uh, for example, uh, okay, I'll put the range here, and then you may have uh, see even these two characters by default you will not get them. Okay, I have changed the font to. Uh, uh, deja vu sans, okay, okay, and uh, that's how it is getting me this thing, okay. And on uh, CMD command line, uh, there's a limitation on what phones you can set, okay, and therefore we can't show them. Uh, these characters will not be available on command. CMD. Okay, uh, other Indian characters, you'll have to change the font, and then you'll be able to see them. Uh, Linux normally most of the characters they work. ASCII was a basic thing. So every uh, all the characters, including the Unicode, is an extension from ASCII. So zero to one twenty seven, which was initially followed by ASCII, is followed by all characters. So it's basically a back end thing. Like if we see a symbol of group A, then that means they have yeah. assigned the, They are assigned, there's a code point value for it. Okay. So 61 to 7 A means like every A to Z lowercase letter has a specific name. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, now I, I'll tell you. Okay, now one more, more thing about Unicode and Java. The Java file you are writing, you are putting all kinds of characters in it. Can I use all these Indian characters also? Yes. 
you can use them. Oh, I'm, I, I'm finding difficulty here with my codes. Right? I'm finding difficulty with the codes. I can't show them here. Okay? Indian characters, I can't show them. But do I know their Unicode values? If I know them in hexadecimal, I can use them. I can put them in my Java file. And how? And it would be in such a manner that uh, whatever the uh, uh, extension or whatever someone may have, a file, it doesn't matter, he won't be able to see it is a different thing because a limitation is about the phone. But if I want to, in, in my Java file anywhere, I want to write, okay, uh, sorry. Suppose I want to write something here, uh, okay, in the print end, okay, in the new line, after the new line, okay, uh, uh, maybe hello world, and here you want to include what? You want to include that rupee symbol? Yes, you can put that. Uh, maybe rupee symbol is not supported in this particular machine. Okay, but my character, fine. What we use, I, I, yesterday we saw backslash is used for escaping you can use backslash followed by u to indicate that you will be giving four hexadecimal digits about the value of the character okay so you can say 20b9 that's a value for the rupee in hex this is in hex that rupee symbol so you want to print that yes i can do that uh, on command, this value is not supported. If I run this application, if it is unable to show it, it will show a question mark there. So you might see a question mark. The point is, I can put uh, the rupee symbol, but in Java, just by saying backslash u followed by four hexadecimal digits, I'm able to specify any Unicode value. Okay, you are able to specify. So when we call this as a Unicode escape. It's not only about strings here. Unicode escape, fine. Uh, what do you think will happen if I do it like this? That C backslash U 0063. Yeah, 616263 lowercase a, b, c. This is C. This will compile. This would compile. There's no problem with this. Okay. I want to check this compilation quickly. Okay, let's do that quickly. It was F7. <clears throat> Uh, where was it? Okay, we called something else also, right? Uh, Need a made a change again. Is it that same problem? Have I opened the file from this place? Okay. No, this doesn't have a hello dot Java. That's fine. Oh, we made a change. Achha, we made a change at a wrong place. <laughs> we had to include it here. backslash u 20b9 but anyway it won't come because oops
Yeah, that question mark because it can't represent it. That font is here, the font here doesn't support. If I would turn on Linux, you would have seen that. Okay, I think we'll continue tomorrow now, right? Yeah, so we'll continue with this and then we'll look into the reference types. Yeah. Uh, Saturday, Sunday? Uh, not tomorrow, it is Monday. Sorry, next is Monday. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you.